work year um, what other people were up to. So, so we've organised these to facilitate the opportunity for people just to share um, what they've been doing, what's worked for them, any of the barriers, etc. Um, so, so hopefully this afternoon um, we'll do just that for you. They truly are for schools and by schools, um, just an opportunity to share and for those of you attending to have the chance to ask any questions um, that you might have. So I am going to uh, hand over to Lichard because I'm sure everyone will be bored of me uh, talking before long um, and they've got far more interesting things to tell you than I could ever hope to have. So over to you. OK, OK, uh, thanks, Louise, and thanks to Central South for inviting us to share what uh, the work we've been doing through this webinar. Um, the title is Equity uh, and Remote Learning, um, and all schools sort of come from a different angle where this is concerned, uh, unique to each individual school, and probably our journey will sound similar to the journeys other schools have been on over the last year, especially. But uh, before we start, I'll just uh, introduce you and uh, to the staff on the screen because it's a team effort uh, and um, the presentation it will be structured in a way that you'll hear individual stories uh, from different angles within the school. Uh, so I'm Jeremy Phillips. I'm the head teacher of Litcher Primary School um, and I'll be explaining the context and the strategic direction of the school and how we got to where we are and where we think we are, and where we think we're going. Um, we've got Dale Richards and the deputy head teacher of the school who leads well-being uh, and during the last uh, year on-site provision, family engagement and looking after the vulnerable learners and families. Uh, we've got Josh Slade, a year two teacher, one of the ICT team um, who will be explaining the, the journey that they followed in year two. He also leads Microsoft Teams within the school and Microsoft. Then we've got Gemma Dimmock, who's also uh, an ICT lead in the school. She's a year four teacher and um, has is an accredited Google Classroom trainer as well and uh, supports ICT through the school. Uh, and Wyndham Howells as well, year six teacher, one, another ICT lead um, that leads on Hub and all the apps that Hub provides um, through the school as well. Um, we've got Kim Trahar, uh, phase leader for Foundation Phase, and she'll be explaining sort of the journey sh she's been on with ICT, as we all have. And then Mrs Matthews uh, and Shauna Vanagas. Mrs Matthews is our Key Stage 2 phase leader and um, leads our TTA, our Teachers Training Links at the Cardiff Metropole. And Shauna is a Year 6 teacher, a Science and Technology lead, and uh, also has been supporting student training in the school. OK, a bit of context about the school. Uh, Litchard Primary School is a school situated to the north of Bridgend Town. We're a large primary school of nearly 500 pupils now, including a learning resource base for Key Stage 2. Um, equity so has been a heart of this school and we've really revisited uh, that phraseology and what it means, especially over the last year, because it certainly highlighted the types of community that we are particularly serving um, and we serve a diverse range uh, of communities. We've got quite an affluent social uh, affluent community, uh, which the school sits in. If you drove to our school, you would come down quite a leafy area of private housing, quite a lot of professional families, um, high expectations on the school, um, high expectations for their children. Um, then we've got um, a larger percentage of our children come from a socio-economic deprived community or on our doorstep um, and it's out of the nearly 2000 wards in Wales where the multi uh, deprivation index is measured it's in the top 100 of deprivation um, and we really have challenges from the situation those families are in on a day-to-day -day basis and then we've got another community which if you know Bridgend area, it's situated around Bridgend Hospital. And that's in a mid range, really, uh, of so socioeconomic uh, vulnerability, or it's about mid range that the families that come from that area. Uh, the school takes about 20% of its pupils from outside of the traditional catchment area. And we've got 30% uh, ch of children on free school meals at the moment that's increased dramatically over the last six months and our vulnerability index which we've compiled ourselves uh, ourselves 
where about 30 percent of children come from a vulnerable category so um from that i just that gives you a flavor of the type of school that we are and it's from that i mean we when you work in a school for a number of years you sort of lose sight really of the community that you're in but when you look at the statistics and especially over the last year you realize that the the diverseness of this particular school has been a challenge from the outset. Um, where we've come from over the past, especially the past five years, um, we've had to respond to pupil rising numbers and an estimate inspection, which went well. Uh, and also where we think that we can improve the best going forward. Now we've managed to uh, do a lot of self-evaluation ourselves and come to our conclusions which others agree with and our challenge advisors and people externally uh, have seen but that's what it started when we did our ICT quality mark many years ago and we realized that a lot of the knowledge was sitting with one person so when we advertised for new teacher appointments uh, as one or two members of staff retired and we were increasing in size of the school we made an essential component component that teachers had ICT as an expertise and also that Welsh was an expertise as well, because that was an area that came up in our recent inspection and has been an area really that we've been developing. So appointments of staff have been uh, focused on ensuring that we're building a capacity uh, for uh, ICT across the school and it's not sitting with any one person. So we've got uh, uh, a team now of ICT digital leaders who are on the screen now. Uh, we've got Gemma, Wyndham and Josh uh, lead our ICT and also uh, Mr Richard's deputy head also uh, sort of oversees uh, and coordinates that as well. Um, as with all the new areas of learning, we've set up teams like many other schools um, so that we are increasing capacity. Now when we look at equity in the school, um, you know, it's all about uh, having the capacity to improve, but also have an equal, um, uh, equal skill base across the school and with teachers. We all specialise in areas and we all know our strengths and weaknesses, but ICT, Welsh and some other subjects, you know, that then especially key subjects, um, there needs to be a, a good skill base with those teachers so that the provision across the whole school uh, is equitable and of high quality. And I think our journey over the last three or four years with teacher appointments has ensured that, uh, and training, that uh, we are on that journey and doing, um, and doing well. Uh, in 2017 and 18, our ICT leaders all had training through Central South. Um, whether it was through Hub, uh, Google Classroom training and Microsoft training. And like I said, we we're lucky to have an accredited Google Classroom trainer who started to train our teachers up before we knew lockdown was approaching in 2019. Uh, so it did put us in a good position, really. But we also recognised that teachers were coming from a completely different starting place uh, with their ICT skill. Um, as the school went into emergency closure last March, you know, it really did highlight what we were doing well, but also we were having to engage with uh, a very diverse community. Uh, and that word equitable keeps on coming up in making sure that what we were providing for each family, um, each child was equitable. Um, and I know others, loads of schools have been on this journey of issuing devices um, and making sure that we could get the children online for learning or get them into school. Um, but our systems came into operation and we realised that our systems are quite effective, having a, a vulnerability audit uh, undertaken uh, two, two and a half, three years ago, and we could identify where these families were at a click of a button, really. Um, so um, we could see that where uh, parents were struggling, uh, we could get the input in there as soon as we could, working with the agencies in, in the local authority. Um, we also recognise that teachers need some more support in ICT. Um, they were all coming from different places and now we were having to deliver this. 
um, training uh, had to take place. We were lucky that we could do that internally because we built up the capacity. So um, through, um, I have to say, excellent training from our ICT team and understanding our teachers as well and their honesty of where they were at. Uh, and that includes me, uh, who, who struggles with ICT, and you've got to lean on people. But being honest where you are uh, was crucial to this. So um, again, for equity, we looked at our vision as well as a school, and we've we've had time really. That's what it has afforded us this last year is to have that time to refocus uh, and to rethink um, our purpose. Um, not exactly navel gazing, but actually doing trying to do things that are constructive and uh, move the school forward in a constructive way uh, with equity at the heart of it uh, because of our diverse community. So uh, again, we've divided this up now for each person in the school um, on the screen here to tell their story. So I'll pass you on now to Mr. Richards, Deputy Head, who's sort of led on the well-being and engagement side of um, the, the remote learning, in particular equity. I pass it on to you, Dale. Good afternoon, all. Thanks for uh, showing up. I was thinking it was just a few of us on you, just the staff and maybe the CSC gang, but I've clicked on look who's attending and just realised there's probably about 20, 30 people on you, so a little bit more nervous now. Um, as as Jay said, I'm, I'm the head, deputy head of the school. I said head, then I tried to slip there, Jay, sorry, mate. I'm the deputy head of the school, um, and I just tell you a little bit about our journey, I suppose, behind the scenes and a little bit above the service as well, because it would have been quite easy as a deputy, a non-teaching deputy as well, to have a, have a summer off, really, um, and to hide away. But being the school that we are, was very much about engaging our community and ensuring well-being as well as, as learning standards. So I'll just share... Uh, my side of things, which links in with all the others on the screen really, and the school overall. So just want to check, you can see. Is that come up there? Can you all see that? Yeah, it's on, Dave, yeah. There you go. OK, so um, again, as Jeremy said, it's all about equity at the school because of our diverse um, community. And the very first, uh, well, in the first lockdown, as I refer to it, it was very much a case of at that point um, ensuring the well-being of, of those pupils really. It was luckily enough for us that we had already, I'd set up with the local Sims team uh, a vulnerability database. So I had highlighted the children we considered to be um, vulnerable. It wasn't available via the local authority, um, social services and early help team. So it was something that we got together before uh, and it sort of worked out really that when it, it came to pass that we needed to contact and highlight these individuals, we were ready to go really. So that was sort of I say, a bit of luck. It was something that we had done uh, part of our strategy because we have to. Um, and that worked well in the first lockdown. Um, by the second lockdown period, uh, a big part of this for us was linking in with the local uh, EDSU team, the vulnerability groups uh, and the social services team where we had to sort of catch up really because lots had happened over lockdown and there was lots of new cases. So it was a case of really reconfiguring that batch of children, uh, CP, uh, care and support, the lack children, young carers and all the rest of it, as well as the children we consider to be vulnerable, even though they aren't in those groups uh, and they do exist. So, you know, we we put as a percentage of a quarter of our children, actually, which seems enormous, but they've either been on uh, care and support or CP or they, they, they in need of that support. They may be um, the working poor or low income families and all the rest of it. So it was very much a, it's a case of knowing your community and there are schools out there, new heads and new deputies who are probably good in jobs. For me, that's the biggest tip, I think, in, in the school. Um, anything like Lichard is, is to know the backdrop of your school. Um, it takes some time, uh, but it is something that is achievable. Communication was was enormous, really. Um, in the first lockdown, that was pretty much via our platforms um, and the wellbeing team, but myself, uh, the head, and other CP officers and wellbeing officers. Um, what we've done all the way through, as you can see at the bottom as well, is, is 
particularly in this section of the lockdown is we've been tracking engagement as well because as well as just the obviously the, the vulnerables it was a case of checking up on all children so we've been communicating via phone calls um email facebook messenger we've used it all really to keep in touch with people staff then have been using um google classrooms and and keeping track really of the children that are online learning and those who are not um as you can see by the stats there the most recent class statistics are all around about 70 or over i mean you're five and six up to 90 percent and those are children that are doing online learning um, there's a small minority that are not and then they receive uh, paper packs but overall those are the children 91 percent, for example in year six who are online every week it may not be every day some are on there's a high percentage on every day but that's the kind of figures we're looking at and even in our uh, learning uh, resource class or mld class we're up to 68.8 percent um an enormous part of it has been as mr phillips mentioned earlier sharing of technology and i have to say she's not on you now but our thrive and well-being officer has done an incredible job of handing out and making sure that everyone who needs technology has got that whether it's the MiFi, wi fis or um laptops and, and ipads and that is that's that's why I, I guess our figures there have risen our over school overall school percentage for engagement online is 76 0.8 percent and it's as high as 82 in the juniors and then that's down to the staff's efforts and, and and you'll see that when the teachers present the kind of work that's gone on um the actual provision has got to be good or you won't tune in you know you, you won't watch netflix if it's just repeats of coronation street you've got to have um entertainment i suppose which is teaching that engages children um and parents because they're involved as well and uh you know homeschooling for parents has been an enormous part of that and that's why underneath i've got the community focus right throughout um i played a part in as, as of all the staff really um we've got a especially the first lockdown we were online every day doing assemblies um there's uh, storytelling going on challenges and all sorts i think we're up to 80 90 videos on youtube which started just before the first lockdown and, and carried on right throughout really and I know lots of parents commented on that during, especially the first summer lockdown, it sort of kept them sane in a way. And we did push the hashtag stay connected so that children and the community in general still felt they were in touch with the school. Um, because our first set of online learning was pretty much um, worksheet orientated or, you know, activities and links. There wasn't any online live teaching going on at that point. So it, it did rely on our social media presence and, and, it, and it worked well. Um, and obviously they have provided a little bit of feedback there right throughout. We've been trying to check with our families, you know, with a school of 470 odd. We've had a, a response in our surveys of about 120, so over a quarter. Uh, and the key question was, you know, there, for example, throughout the period, have we endeavoured um, to help with your well-being and learning as a community uh, and then a resounding yes has come back you know 93 percent you'll always get a few negatives i mean it would look like i was lying if it was all blue so it's good to see that people have been honest and we've had conversations with people around improvement and the improvement stats are good as well so between the two lockdowns the game has been changed and, and we were live learning i think probably first in bajen recently or one of the first schools anyway um Documentation has also been a big part of it. So although we've sort of been pretty nice about it and put all these lovely, colourful lessons out there and videos and all those sort of supportive things, we've also said, here's our blended learning policy. This is what we are doing. So we've altered that as we've gone along to, to meet need. There's been a parental agreement. So we've said to parents, this is what we expect. Um, OK, we can't force you into doing it, but this is what we'd like you to do. Um, and also we provided a, a blended learning timetable to show the provision that was available. And that includes sort of afternoon. So we were very sort of early setting that up when I know people have a, like a sort of well-being Wednesday, but we've started the Fridays quite a while back there where staff get a bit of time to catch up. And pupils are encouraged to go outside and, and do more well-being orientated tasks. Um, as I said, feedback's been a big one, really. Uh, we've kept on top of it just to make sure that 
we are doing what we think we're doing. It's all well and good saying, yeah, yeah, we do all the equity stuff. We're really good well-being. We're excellent at this. Although we, you know, we have had assessment previously with um, certain agencies um, to do with community support and all the rest of it. But you know, it's always worth keeping on top of it. Um, and we've asked the parents and the pupils the question, you know, how, do you think the school is, is doing a good job uh, in engagement of learning? And there is a resounding yes. So it's a 95% from parents, almost 96%. Uh, and the pupils are saying, you know, three quarters of the children, so that's 100 out of probably 400 or so, because obviously nursery children are a bit young to ask. And we did this with you two and above. So, you know, some majority of our pupils, 100 surveyed, have said, yeah, we think the school's doing an excellent job or doing well. And one or two fair players said uh, the school could do better. But of course, we can't always we can always do better, but that's the sort of backdrop really um, behind the scenes in terms of the well-being, vulnerability, and the way the school is sort of connected with the community throughout um, the period so far. We feel like we're on a journey. We certainly won't go back. I mean, there's lots of practice here and things that we do now, we'll continue to do. Some of it is what we were already doing, but um, we're certainly in a better place now having um, taken on the challenge of teaching like the rest of the people across the country who are in the education business of teaching and learning and looking after our pupils during the COVID-19 epoch, I suppose, this period of time. So that, that's sort of my side of things. Um, I'll pass it back over now to our next sharer of uh, details, and that's going to be Josh Slade. Who is a year two? Is I was a year two teacher. Um, I actually taught Josh. I know which will blow your minds because we look about the same age now. But uh, Josh is an ex pupil of mine, so everything he says now is because I taught him. Basically, is that right, Josh? Uh, there's not uh, more I can say about that now. <laughs> uh, I'm yeah. I'll um, I'll quickly share my screen. As as Dana said, my name is Josh Slade, and I am a year two teacher here at Lichard, and I will hopefully bring up my screen so that you can see. Can everybody see that screen then? Yeah, we can see that, Josh. Brilliant, okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'll just give you a quick tour of what uh, our blended learning offer has looked like in year two. Um, so our main method of delivery has been through Google Classroom. Um, we have used other technologies as well, such as Bug Club eBooks, which have been provided by ActiveLearn. And as part of the blended learning policy we've put together as a school, we have put together what we call the Lichard Blended Learning Playbook, which summarises what key technologies we use and for what purpose. Um, but the main thrust of our blended learning offer has been through Google Classrooms. Um, so in times of school closure, in year two, we have provided three daily activities for every child. And these have been scheduled to appear on the class stream at 6 p.m. the evening before. Um, so, for example, here I've taken a screen grab of my class stream. Uh, these are Wednesday's activities, so these would appear on the Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock. And I think I'm right in saying that that originally came at the request of some of our parents so that they could go on the night before uh, to get their head around whatever activities the teachers were providing. On the morning of then, uh, we provide a daily morning uh, live session, uh, a synchronous check-in really, a synchronous registration um, pro uh, provided through Google Meet, through Google Classroom. And really this is an opportunity to see one another uh, and in periods of school closure, uh, to touch base, to find out each other's news and to provide an introduction for the activities for the day, just to kind of set the scene, I guess. Uh, it's also been a really good way of linking up uh, children who are accessing childcare in school and children who are in their home. So uh, the school bought webcams and installed them in the classrooms that were being used for childcare inside the school, which meant that whether children were at home or children were in school, uh, they were able to see one another and there was a link provided between the children who were at home and who were in school. Uh, when the live session is finished, uh, we upload the recording of that meeting to the class stream and the main purpose of this is to provide access to this meeting for children who are unable to attend it live for a variety of reasons, um, quite often due to parents working hours. So if it's inconvenient for 
children to be on at nine o'clock at the set time, they're still able to um, access the meeting, albeit not live, uh, but to hear what's been said and to hear any news that's been shared. Um, at three o'clock in the afternoon, we've then uh, provided another synchronous live session. And the aim of this session is to provide answers to any questions that the children might have and to really be the plenary for the day. So to sum up and tie together any learning that's taken place. And the, they were well attended and uh, we felt that the children really enjoyed coming on and seeing one another and almost saying goodbye for, for the day. So almost like the, that last 10 minutes of school would be if we were in school. It was nice to share that time together. Um, so essentially the activities that we provide are provided asynchronously so the children can access the activities and the resources and complete the work at whatever time they would like to throughout the day um, but it's kind of bookended with two synchronous sessions so that we can all see one another and check in. Throughout the day uh, we have aimed to provide support and feedback for children who have submitted work or children who have asked for support. So quite often children will go on and say, Mr. Slade, I don't get this, or Mr. Slade, how do I do this activity? And within reason, we try to provide um, feedback throughout the day. Um, so I've taken a screen grab of an example here of a child who submitted a maths activity. And as you can see, he has said here, this was a fun job and, and I loved writing the words. Um, when I checked his work, I could see that he'd got the vast majority of the questions right, but there was one that he had got wrong and that there were a couple that he had missed out. Um, now, on occasions where it, it looks like the children have had, there's, there's some kind of misconception there that's led to them um, struggling with a number of the questions, we would provide uh, we would provide feedback and almost teach through the comments we give to the, to the children. Um, in this particular example, the, the question that the child got wrong, it was an isolated example of, of a question that he'd struggled with. So I just asked him to have another look at it. Um, and as you can see underneath, uh, he's been proactive and he's asked his mum to sit down and help him. And in the end, he got all of the questions right. So we aim to feed forward and we aim to try and support the children uh, as they're doing their activities as far as is possible throughout the day. Uh, we've tried to use a, tra uh, a range of technologies. As Dale said earlier, we've, we've tried to uh, engage and entertain the children as much as possible. Um, so one, an example of a technology that we've used is Screencastify, which can be used through Google Classroom. Um, so I've included a resource here that actually um, one of our students made. So I, I'm responsible for mentoring a PGC student this term. And uh, as class teachers, we provided training for the students so that they knew how to use the technologies that we were also using as teachers. Um, and she's given me permission to share this resource because I felt that it was a, an outstanding resource. So I won't play the whole thing, but I will play the first few seconds of it for you. OK, so today we're going to be looking at making changes to the storyboard that we made yesterday based on the dragon on the flag story. So if we look at the storyboard that we had yesterday, let's think about what sort of changes that we can make to make it our very own storyboard. And if I skip forwards, um, you will hopefully see how the video provides an interactive teaching session. So we could change the way she looks, such as her hair and her clothes. We could even change her name if we wanted to. It doesn't have to stay as Lily. We could even make it into a boy. It's so uh, this is effectively a teacher model for the children to follow. And um, in this video, I haven't found the right section actually, but she's used the technology to zoom in and out on the different pictures to try and engage the children's interest. And by the end, the children have got um, a, a model for them to follow. The range of technologies we've used and the range of activities that we've attempted to provide have given the children different mediums of work um, to submit and this has encouraged creativity. Uh, so here are a few examples of um, creative work that the children have completed for us. Uh, we've also attempted to support the children's well-being um, and we, we were very aware that the children at home were uh, very much missing their friends and very much missing the class dynamic and the class atmosphere and the togetherness that comes with being in class. Um, so we've attempted to support the children's wellbeing in every way we can. So there are a few examples here. We asked the children to go on a walk in the local area with 
appearance at a convenient point for them and identify living and non-living things. And then as a result to uh, use a tool on Hub to draw a little painting of what they had done. Um, and up in the top right here is an example from um, earlier on in the school closure where we asked them to do a virtual expedition through Google Expeditions. And so in the absence of being able to go out physically and meet other people physically, uh, they were able to go on an expedition virtually and ask and answer questions on there. So we've looked to try and uh, maintain and support the children's wellbeing in any way we can. And finally, here's an example of how uh, Google Classroom and the way that we've used it has facilitated col collaboration. And um, so what you can see here is a joint report. Um, the children were asked to choose a subheading uh, that they would like to research linked to our topic of Wonderful Wales. And this sheet has been uh, added to by five children. So five children have, or maybe six actually, five or six children have chosen a subheading, done some research, and um, added to the sheet so that at the end they, they've effectively worked together even though uh, obviously they're not physically together. So we feel that um, Google Classroom has been very, very helpful and thanks to the training that we've received and provided, we've been, uh, we've been able to use it uh, creatively. Okay, thanks Josh. Uh, that, uh, uh, Josh, uh, again, uh, quite a new teacher at the school, um, has brought quite a lot of scale of it, um, ICT um, to uh, the school um, and has helped us with Microsoft, uh, especially Microsoft uh, packages and Microsoft Teams uh, when we were, were all struggling what to do with it. Um, so a big thanks to Josh. We're going to Gemma now, uh, Gemma Year 4 teacher. Uh, Gem is our Google Classroom lead and is basically was uh, our only ICT lead many years ago uh, and took us through the Vector ICT quality mark at the time, the first one, which highlighted basically uh, the term equity. They used different words for it in those days, but um, basically we needed to uh, equal out the provision in foundation phase and um, uh, increase devices and also increase training. And um, Gemma has been at the centre of that development over the last five years. So I'll pass it on to Gemma. Thank you. So, yes, yeah, Jeremy said I'm Gemma from year four, um, and I've sort of taken on IT throughout the school. And I've been so grateful to have Josh and Wyndham to support me over the last couple of years as well, because it is a mammoth task. <laughs> um, so, just going to share my screen. OK, so. Can you all see that OK? Yeah, yes, you can see it. OK, so um, in your fall, jo Josh has explained lots of it already. So thank you, Josh. <laughs> um, but in your fall, we've as well taking on Google Classroom as our main sort of um, way of teaching the children. Um, and as you can see, this is a screenshot of our Google Classroom, uh, my Google Classroom page. So every week at the start of the week, or usually on a Sunday night, the children get provided with this timetable, um, which has all the links that they need to different videos of me teaching, um, to links to external websites um, that will help them with the tasks. Um, and they can also see what sort of learning is coming up for the week. Um, and then each day or the night, the night before at around six o'clock, all the tasks are uploaded for them to see ready for the following day. Again, very much like Josh said, we had parents um, requesting could we put the work on the night before so that they could get their heads around it before they have to help the children with it? Um, so that seems to have gone down well. Um, so each morning we have a Google Meet um, and that's where we do our synchronous learning. I explain the tasks for the day um, and I also show the children the links that they can access. Um, and also we post that up on the stream then every day for them for the children who have not been able to attend the meeting um, to access as well so here's just showing you um there's a screenshot there of the meeting some of the meetings we've done so that's the synchronous learning um and that happens at 9 30 in year four every day 
um, just because there's siblings in school and we like to try and do it at different times so that everyone's got a good chance of accessing the learning. Um, now, I've so zoomed in here to show you that um, these links take the children to the resources they need. So, for example, we will read in George's Marvellous Medicine. So all they would have to do is click on this link, which would take them to the chapter that they could read. Or if we've got any sort of uh, lower ability readers, there's also um, a clip there of me reading the chapter to them so they could still access um, that story. And then there is another link here, um, which took them to a video I'd created then using Screencastify um, to show them exactly how to use the links, what they needed to do for the task um, and the, the expectations I had of them. Um, so I wanted to share this one with you because it's a lesson that went really, really well in year four. Um, as I've already said, we were reading George's Marvellous Medicine and this particular lesson we'd discussed onomatopoeia and alliteration and the children had to come up with their own revolting recipes. So as you can imagine, it was a lot of fun <laughs> um, and the children, the, the work they produced was absolutely fantastic. So some of the examples here and the, this is a wide range of abilities, even sort of the lower ability that perhaps you wouldn't get so much out of in class sometimes. Even they come up with some absolutely outstanding work. Um, so it, it, it sort of goes to show that what we're doing online is benefiting the children as well as face to face learning. Um, so there are some examples of uh, their re recipes and some comments that I've made. So I always think of a positives um, for the children and a next step. So the next step in this case was uh, usually to add perhaps they'd missed out some alliteration or they'd missed out some of the bossy verbs. Um, so they would be the next steps. Same here. Um, but what they then went on to do as a second sort of task is we shared these on Twitter and then we asked the children to create another revolting recipe for a cake that they could actually make at home if they were able to. And the response we had was absolutely outstanding. We shared, um, like I said, the recipes on Twitter and we also shared the photos of the things the children have made on Twitter and then our engagement level. So some of the children that had never been on to Google Classrooms uh, over the lockdown, we soon found that they were engaging as well. So through the use of Google Classroom and our other so social media pages like Twitter and Facebook, it managed to capture that engagement of the other children that we perhaps hadn't heard much from either. So um, yeah, that's our story in your form. Obviously, we're doing lots of other things, as Josh has explained, but that was a big success this term. So I just wanted to share that with you. And I'll hand you back now to Jeremy. OK, thank you, Gemma. Uh, again, it's showing what, what's gone on in year four and, and, and the point of equitability. Uh, I, Dale did mention it, that the, the amount of effort that went in at the beginning of lockdown in using Facebook, in using um, Twitter. Um, we've got our Lichard app as well. We, we To get at our parents, we had to come at it from all sorts of angles. And um, uh, initially assemblies, for example, um, when devices hadn't been distributed in the early stages, uh, the phone was the way to get to our children. And some children still prefer using their phones. But um, now we've had our devices and at this school, I suppose we, we've issued over 100 devices to our children um, so far. Uh, and we think we've captured them all now who need them. Um, and uh, we've sent some iPads out as well when we've run out and what, whatever we've got. But I think we've we're fully covered now uh, with all the children that require the kit. I mean, go on to year six now uh, with Wyndham. Uh, Wyndham uh, sort of has led our hub side of things in the school because it takes uh, a heck of a lot of man managing and we've got children coming in and out of the school we've got um 
a lot of, uh, a lot of movement of pupils in this area because of the local hospital um, and of our local social housing estate as well. So, um, you know, I, I, we can turn over quite easily over 50 children a year uh, just by moving children moving in and out of the area. So management of hub and keeping that alive and also um, uh, managing all the things that hub can provide because it's a platform with we can take you in all sorts of direction and Wyndham's been the man that's supported us in that. OK, over to you, Wyndham. Oh, thank you, Jeremy. Hi, everyone. Um, like Jeremy said, my name is uh, Wyndham Howells. I'm the Year six teacher in Little Primary School. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with you. Uh, so give me one minute. I've probably got less to say now than Josh and Gemma because they've taken everything that I wanted to say. So but I will give you a whistle stop tour of life in year six uh, online. Give me uh, two seconds. Hang on. That's good, we can see it. Yeah, all good. Yeah. yeah, all good. OK, so uh, within year six, um, we've been using like Google Classroom is consistent throughout the school. So this is just a screenshot of our home page. Uh, so where we, where the children will post comments or our post daily work and we post our videos for morning meetings and our afternoon meetings for the children to engage with as well. Um, accessing the work, which the children have found really easy is, it, you know, the majority of the year six children we got here are using um, social media, so they find the concept um, very similar. That if they just log on, go to their stream or the home page, everything they need will be there every day. Um, so it's really nice to interact with the children and with any questions they have there as well. Um, one area we've particularly been strong on focusing in year six um, is being able to ensure that DCF is covered from home. So even though um, we haven't got access within school, the amount of children have been able to access um, Hub and Google from here as well. We've been it's allowed us to manage to, to sort of push forward with our DCF area. This is just a particular area of uh, work that we've we've enjoyed doing, and the children enjoy doing as well. So to think we've not been we haven't been able to sort of we've missed areas of the curriculum. We've been fortunate enough to have access to different areas with Hub. So, for example, this is um, we've we've covered databases in Year Six this term. So, for example, here we've looked at Welsh artists uh, being a theme with our wonderful Wales topic for the term. So, later on as well, I got a video to show you the links with this as well. But it's about being able to ensure that we are covering areas that we need to cover from home and not forgetting areas that we can't cover either. But DCF and ICT has been a particular area we've been able to exploit, um, particularly thanks to Hub. Um, so I'll move on for the next one. With carrying on with this as well, this was a bit of um, covered over about two or three weeks. We've really been able to ex carry on with our extended writing within our online as well. Um, so this is a particular piece of work that was for a nice Southford piece of story writing. So we were able to carry on the writer's journey throughout the term. It did take a bit of hair pulling and good planning to pull off, but the majority of responses we've had from the children have been fantastic. And like I said, this is just one example of the amount of responses we've had back, the, the quality of the work that the children have engaged with that journey that they usually would in class has been has been brilliant. We've been really pleased. So this is now just um, a section. I know Jeremy uh, and Josh have covered this section as well in terms of marking, but for our marking, we will often text highlight and write um, comments in the private comment section for each pupil. Uh, we find the private comment section, uh, the children engage a lot more with and it can be uh, very responsive as well. Um, it also allows you to write more detail. Uh, most of you with, that are engaging with Google Classroom would probably understand that as well. But this has been a particular area that we've like, enjoyed as well that we can't obviously we can't mark in books right now, but this has been a there and then moment where we can mark and respond 
when I needed to as well. Um, so this is just a particular comment um, marking with where we've done a piece of Welsh work. Um, moving on, so not the best pictures, uh, Dale and Sean, so I do apologise, but I thought I'd put them on anyway. Um, so in terms of our synchronous learning, yeah, yeah, probably if I think about it, you're right. Um, <laughs> so with our synchronous learning in year six, we've very similar to Josh and Gemma, we conduct morning meetings at 9 a.m. and plenary afternoon catch up meetings at 3 p.m. So this is an opportunity for us then to explain um, the lessons for the day and provide some live teaching as well for certain areas of work that day that might need that little bit more in depth explanation. Um, in terms of our asynchronous learning, then we also use, um, we've been effective with using Screencastify to create uh, additional tutorials for the children to use. They can use them um, at any time throughout the day as many times as they want. It's, it's been a really very good engagement tool uh, and massively helped our communication with the pupils and parents as well in understanding what exactly we require from the pupils each day. So I'll play you a quick um, snippet of it. It'll work, fingers crossed. So. So this was just the lesson carried. This was this was the second lesson carried on from uh, the screenshot I showed you earlier. So the so where they're accessing databases and using different searches, they're now moving on to creating the databases here using just too easy and then J2 data as well. I played a little bit longer. OK, so that's just the example of, so of every single screencastify we would do for, for the lessons that we would create. It's just an extra tool they used to ensure that the pupils are able to understand what exactly is required. So like a step by step guide for something like this to carry out in school is, is pretty straightforward because you've, you've got the children there and you, you can go step by step and obviously from home a little bit more tricky. I, I, I wouldn't expect my children to um, just to say, can you create these databases using a sort of instruction manual that I've typed on my assignment because it's not as clear as visual learning, especially from home. So we've especially found Screencastify as um, a major tool going forward with our blended learning. Um, and I think that's everything. We don't play it again, do we? I think that's. I think that is everything. I will stop talking. Thank you, Wyndham. No, no, <laughs> no thank you, Wyndham. So it just shows sort of where we come from, year two, going to year four, and then going up to year six with databases. Um, a, a important part of the story. I, I would go back to theme equitability. Um, it, it's reaching, uh, as Wyndham just said, they're using Screencastify, and a lot of other schools use that platform as well. But it's so uh, important that those instructions, especially. Uh, for parents, so if they were not sure how to teach something, there's a good guide there that you can keep on recording and parents can refer to, um, and they can see um, how perhaps they could help their children at home, uh, because it's a minefield and that's part of equitability as well. You, you want, you're dealing with um, uh, parents, obviously some uh, completely limited time. Uh, dare I say it, some are completely disinterested, and then you've got some who are very enthusiastic. Um, and they all need in their own way some support or the children need to support themselves. Um, going on to, there's a lot of tools there and as a head teacher uh, I get lost with it all um, and probably one of the least skilled in the school in using these platforms. But um, I'll pass you on to Kim now because Kim, uh, phase leader for uh, Foundation Phase um, and Kim, like myself at the beginning of all this, um, uh, this was, in fact, ICT does make you feel uh, rather ill-equipped sometimes, uh, and especially at the beginning of lockdown where you were just launched into it and you had to make it work. But I'll pass you on to Kim's journey. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. That's uh, a lovely introduction there. <laughs> Thank you very 
much. <laughs> um, hi, um, my name is Kim. I'm Kim Draha, and I'm Foundation Phase Leader. Um, and I teach alongside Josh in year two. Back, um, begin more, well, more than a year ago now, when Gemma came in and said she'd had been on some Google Classroom training. We did a staff meeting on Google Classroom training, just really general, all the staff were there together. And we found out, I think it was quite on early on in the day that we were having this Google Class training. And I was very, very worried all day. I was really concerned because I'm not at all a fay with, with, um, Anywhere, anywhere near the level that Josh and Gemma and Wyndham are. Um, and anyway, we went into the Google Classroom and I came out there completely baffled, completely baffled and extremely concerned of what I was, what was it I was expected to do. And as a phase leader, you're always, you're always trying to look, look into to lead the way. And it was, it was completely above my head. Um, a couple of months later then, we, we kind of had, we broke off into teams and... I was in Josh's team and it was the, the groups were differentiated. So we had another um class kind of class classroom training for Google Classroom. And needless to say, I was in the green group, which was taken by Josh very, very well. Um the, the pace was really, really slow. Um and there was only three or four of us in this group, whereas the other groups, you know, they they were they were more populated, but we needed to be in a smaller group. We needed to be in a slower pace group. And, and Josh was really, 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 really good at delivering things and explaining things really thoroughly. However, he wasn't doing it for us. OK, so he was making us making us do it because, um, as I said, I work alongside him in year two. Um, and if I asked Josh to do it for me, he would do it. But that's not going to that wouldn't have helped me at all. So the whole of the digital team have been excellent in supporting the likes of myself and there's a few other teachers then who needed a lot of support, but mon monitoring us and making sure that we are doing it rather than doing it for us, which was great because lockdown came. Um, and once we split up into the different groups, we I think it ran over a couple of weeks that we were doing different aspects of Google Classroom. Um, and once the first lockdown came, I was dipping my toe in uh, lots of support again off Josh. Josh was overseeing what I was doing. Once locked, we came back to school. What really, really helped me, I think, was continuing to upload things onto Google Classroom. So we just didn't stop. Um, I think if I'd stopped and switched off, or we done now, we're back in school, forgot about it. By the time the second lock time, lockdown had come, I think I would have been back to the same situation again. My confidence would have been shot. But we didn't. We started to um, just little little jibs and drabs, keeping up with it, uploading things, um, homeworks on Google Classroom every week whilst we were in school. So when the second lockdown came, then it was second nature, and it, it, that worked really, really well. By the time the second lockdown came, I was doing live meetings, I was doing synchronous um, learning, I was doing Castify videos and uploading them independently to go along with focus tasks um, and. Quite proud of myself actually that I'd come from being petrified when Jem said that she was delivering Google Classroom training and hub training um, to upload work onto the hub and Google Classroom to actually doing this quite confidently on my own. Um, and that was, you know, thanks to the, to the great digital team that we've got, not just Josh, but Gemma and Wind as well. You know, if Josh was busy, I can go to either of them really and, and they would support. Um, a bit of a funny story. Um, on a Friday, we have a joke. A joke session um, and even though I am confident in, in uploading lots onto Google Classroom and doing synchronous and the asynchronous learning and the castifies, I'm not very good at cropping and cropping videos and we had a on one Friday Friday afternoon we had a um, a joke that was said quite innocently to um, to, the ch to the children on our lives which probably shouldn't and um, thank goodness Josh was there couldn't have gone you know uploaded in live and he was there to cut and paste and crop that little bit out, you know, another level that I couldn't do. Um, but Mr. Slade did that and, and that was great. But that, perhaps that's my next step, Mr. Slade, is to, to teach me how to crop and cut things out and move things around on the platform. But yeah, <laughs> and that's it really. Back over to you, Mr. Phillips. Thank, thanks, Kim. And we've had, a, we've had a laugh on the journey. And, you know, I think it's due to... Um, I'm sure people, especially opposite in Central South, realise 
there are people coming from all different types of uh, places for online learning and using ICT. Um, but I think one of the positive things about ICT going forward, we look at the negative, they'll have children fall, uh, fallen backwards. And, you know, we, we've, we've seen it ourselves perhaps in certain year groups. But there's one area where children have all really developed and staff have, and that's ICT. And there's something this has done this last 12 months and is shown that uh, children uh, are adept at using ICT and this isn't going to go away and this is going to be a massive strength to the future of teaching uh, moving forward. Um, over to another area which has been I suppose by default really we've got really good links with Cardiff Met um, and um, those links um, of all the years we managed to um, have three students assigned to us three students and then being told where well, we go in remote learning as well remotely so uh, Joe and Shauna and Josh um, have all got a student each Joe has been the senior mentor liaising with Cardiff Met and they've been on a remote learning journey in training teachers as well so um, I'll pass you over to Joe and Shauna Sorry, Joe, I think you're on mute there. I don't remember what I said now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I've been senior mentor for some time now with Cardiff Met. Um, and right at the very start, uh, there was training. They, they could see what was going to happen, I think, with Cardiff Met. So um, we had uh, initial training of what virtual and um, remote teaching teaching would look like and um, what the students would be expected to do and that depended on how much IT um, resources the school would have available and so we had to look first of all to see if we were a low-tech school or a high-tech school and actually went on training for that um, and we were very fortunate to be in a position it's taken a long time to get everything ready but we were in a good position that we were a high-tech school so we could really give the students um, great opportunities. Um, the first and foremost, though, we ensured that um, our students were as well trained as we were. And obviously the training has come from our team. It's come from Wyndham, Gemma and Josh. Um, and I've been part of that journey as well. I think I've gone ahead about five years from where I was before last year in, in IT um, expertise, fast track. Uh, but our students have been fantastic. Uh, they've um, taken part in all our training for Google Classroom, for Castify teaching. Um, and yeah, they've, they've made marvellous progress. So they've been put in um, synchronous teaching up. They've been also doing asynchronous teaching. Um, they've had exactly the same experiences as us. Uh, amongst all that, of course, um, we've been using uh, the professional learning passport, the PLP. Um, three of us have been updating that as well, giving advice on that platform because the students tend to have a blue book now where the teacher might just make notes at the end of the day and um, what went well and um, even better ifs. So that learning passport has been very much like that. And as much as that is something that Cardiff Met wanted to use, we have used it. But it's been um, again a lot more hands on the amount of WhatsApp messages I've been sending back and forth my students on a daily basis. And I know Josh and Sean have been, have been exactly the same. Um, our teachers have been um, uploading, first of all, uploading their lessons, the Castify lessons via email. So we've been checking those, sending them back. Now they've been uploading them straight onto the Google Classroom platform after we've had a little look at them as well. Um, the main thing we felt as teachers, um, everything we put out, we are very much aware that parents are able to see um, the teaching as well. And so whereas a student, you know, you can make a mistake in the classroom and fall on your face a little bit and it doesn't it doesn't really matter. That's part of the learning journey as a student, as a PGC student. Um, when, you know, when you're actually doing a castify lesson and you know the parents are all watching it it has to be right so you, you know there's there's no room really for mistakes 
So we have actually spent quite a lot of time with our students on a daily basis, giving a lot of feedback. We've had regular teams meetings and um, senior um, mentors have had teams meetings. I've had a weekly uh, meeting as well um, as a senior mentor with my students. Uh, so it's been very, very hands on including training. So we've looked at standards and teaching. We focused on ways forward, um, how we can achieve the best, um, you know, how we can achieve all the standards. Some of them have been quite tricky to achieve because they've needed to be re uh, very much so in the classroom base. Uh, but actually, we've, it's surprising that they have achieved all, all the standards that were necessary for their first term. So it's been a very, very positive um, experience for us and I think Sean is going to tell you now a little bit about what our students have been doing. Might I add though, they have actually blown me away. Some of their, some of their ideas have been just incredible and for example my student now she was using um, a game, a computer game um, called Among Us and she created a PE lesson um, in the style of this video among us and the children absolutely loved it. I wouldn't have thought of doing that, but um, it was very, very popular and they absolutely love the PE lessons. So uh, that was something that I learned. Over to you, Shona. Yeah, thanks, Joe. I know I think me has been a bit of a joke between me and uh, Wyndham as well in year six that some of the lessons and videos that are going up are putting us to shame. and. Uh, it's good because I think, like you say, we want the um, students to get the most out of this experience. It is very different. It's, you know, not ideal at all, but it's just providing them with all the sort of training and the opportunities that we have. And I think that they've really appreciated that as well and all the sort of conversations that we've had with them. So obviously you're aware that we have our nine o'clock meetings um, live with the children and our 3 p.m. meetings. So the students will always access those as well. And obviously with students, they are not necessarily going to be with us every single day. They have days doing different um, experiences and they have days where they have to plan and prepare. But um, I know definitely with my student, for example, she's been every single morning not wanting to miss out on a nine o'clock meeting, just even to see the children. And then also the days where they've got lessons and resources planned, they will explain and deliver to the children. We'll share the screen so they can actually see the resources that have been created. And then they talk them through step by step what their expectations are for them. And it's a chance then for the children to ask the student the question so that the student's actually being seen as that class teacher because that's one thing that we were quite conscious about is that teacher presence and when you're in school it can be they come in they do the register you know they're taking the class they're in and um, bringing them in off the yard but it's just trying to keep that consistency with being online and the same with the 3pm meeting the check-in i know my student did um, a lovely virtual guided reading session similar to Gemma had said and there was an option for a read along um, as well for the children who maybe couldn't access access the text as well but we did our three o'clock meeting then as a bit of a sort of book club and the children could discuss what they'd read and their thoughts um, and it was just a nice way to sort of build those relationships at the start like Joe said it was a lot of uh, emailing back and forth with resources but luckily to um, thank you for our IT team for getting email addresses for Hub for our students. They can actually access the Google Classrooms. They can see everything we post. They're able to comment and um, speak to the children online. And obviously then we've given them training on how to use the Google Drive and how to create resources straight onto there because I know this can be a bit of a pain with especially publisher. I know that Google doesn't seem to like a publisher at all. So if they are making resources at home and sending them over sometimes when you're trying to upload that onto a onto a Google Docs or into a Google Slide, you can have some issues. So it's just teaching them how to upload them themselves then. And it's you know, we can view them, me and Mr. Howells or anyone who can access the folders on the drive can see things and it's a way of us feeding back and just sort of looking at how we can always improve. So I think, yeah, they've you know been using the Castify videos, they've been um like we even did a live session, first one today because my students been in um, for today and tomorrow. So we did a live English session. So as well as teaching the children who are in the sort of hub with us, she was also then streaming live to the children who were at home. So it, again, it brings them all together and makes them feel like they are still part of that class and are learning together. And I think 
as much as it's been a lot of work and it's been you know a lot for them to come to terms with as well it's been really really successful and I think that they've all really enjoyed this experience and they've gained quite a lot from it so um yeah I think it's gone really positively Thank, thanks Shona uh, thanks Shona um uh so that's uh, we've gone a bit longer than we'd anticipated um, we had a, a lot to share and we, we have done a PowerPoint presentation. I know that was sent to Central South where I suppose um, everything that we've tried to describe um, has been put under the, the focus of equitability. As was one of the, 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 the um, one of the pictures in my room I constantly look at um, is this picture here, uh, which sort of, um, I don't know if you can see that, in amongst my background here, but the mm. equity is not only you know, we want to have it equitable for um, families and for pupils, but equity also it starts in the school and it starts with making sure that your staff are equally supported, because if your staff aren't equally supported to deliver, you're not going to get the children to have that equitable provision throughout their years whilst at the school. Um, but going forward in the school, there's no question we're going to come back to a different type of school where we've got children which are more, much more digitally literate and we're going to have teachers much more teacher, uh, much more digitally literate as well. Um, and that's going to be the key, I think, for catching up uh, when children do come back. Um, we know there's going to be elements and certain children, which we already sort of know, that uh, has, have... Um, fallen backwards of their learning. But there's one area I think most children, and I say most children in the Estin sense, 90%, have um, developed considerably with their ICT and DCF skills. And we can't lose that because that's going to be the access to learning numeracy and literacy going forward. So um, I think that brings us to a close there, Louise, uh, a bit longer than we'd anticipated. Not a problem. Um, thank you all very, very much. I think what shines through um, is the real team um, in the school and how everyone's played a role in the part. So it was really wonderful to hear from so many of you. I decided to keep an element of realism with my own home learner popping in the corner of the screen. I don't know if some of you notice occasionally wielding his iPad with his Google Classroom open not playing Pokemon or Among Us at all. Um, so thank you very, very sincerely for sharing um, all of your work and thank you for all of you who are attending. I'm sure if there are any questions or queries, um, if any of you want to hang around at the end, I, I'm sure that Jeremy won't mind answering them. I'm going to throw him on the spot there, but um, I'm aware we are just over the time we said, so um, you're absolutely free to go. But thank you very, very much for attending. It really is great to have so many of you here. Take good care, everyone.